Here we have another exercise whose purpose is to determine what gets printed out and what happens when this program is run. So take a few minutes to work this out on your own. I'll pause for a few seconds to give you a chance to pause the video and work on it before we move on and discuss it together. All right, let's go ahead and discuss this together. And once again, we'll be drawing out a memory diagram to keep track of what's happening when the program is run. And again, when the program starts, it's going to call main, so that means that we get an activation record for main. And within the activation record, we have all the local variables and parameters for main. Here we have three local variables, x, y, and a. So we have x, which is a pointer, and that gets placed at some memory address, so let's assume that it gets placed at address 1000. We also have y, and let's assume that gets placed at address 1008. And then finally we have a, which is just an int, and let's assume that gets placed at address 1010. Okay, initially, before any code in main runs, the values that are contained in those memory locations for x, y, and a are undefined. And that remains the case when the actual declarations for x and y get executed because they don't perform any explicit initialization. So what are, in most implementations, whatever value happened to be located in memory for where x and y are placed, those values remain there. So there's some undefined values contained inside of x and y. When the program reaches the initialization for a, then it does get initialized to the well-defined value of minus 1. And then on the next line, we assign into x the address of a. So that depends on wherever the program located the object associated with a. In our particular case, that got placed at address 1010. So we have the address value 1010 stored inside of x. More importantly, what is guaranteed to be the case is, this, is that this is the address of A, so X is actually going to be pointing at the object associated with A. Now on the next line, when we actually print out the result of dereferencing X, what that does is it follows that address value to the object located at that address. So it's going to follow this pointer to the object that it's pointing at, and print out the value of that object. And so that happens to be minus 1. On the next line, we have an assignment. And on the left-hand side, we also have star x, which again will follow that pointer to get to the object a, and sets it, set its value to 42. And so now, on the next line, if we go ahead and print out the value of a, well, it's just been set to 42, so we get the value 42 printed out. Now on the next line, we attempt to dereference the pointer y, but the value that's actually located inside of y is some undefined value. If we're really lucky, that happens to be a null pointer, and most implementations, if you dereference a null pointer, your program will crash. And that's a good thing because that will tell us immediately that we did something wrong. The worst case is that this happens to be some actually pointing at some object and some object that we care about, but maybe not now, maybe in some other context. And so this might set the value of some random object that we care about to 13. And that would be a very difficult bug to track down. So the behavior this here is technically undefined. And again, if we're lucky, our program will crash. If we're unlucky, then it will mess something else in the program up. So let's take out these two statements and reason about what happens if those statements weren't there. So on the next line, we have the assignment y equals x. Okay, and with an assignment in C++, we always have value sem semantics, meaning that we copy the value from the right-hand side into the object associated with the left-hand side. Okay, so we make a copy of the value inside of x into the memory location for the object y. And so that means that rather than being an undefined value, we have the well-defined address that's located inside of x. 
in this particular machine will be the address 1010. But in all cases, it's going to be the address of the A object, so Y is going to be pointing at the object A. Finally, on the last line, we print out the result of dereferencing Y, which will follow the pointer to what it's pointing at, namely the A object, and print out the value there, and that value is 42. And then we also just print out the value of the A object, which is 42.